design and this is the first design I'm ever using on my silicone practice finger which I'm really excited to get to play around with and I can promise you there will be many more extreme tutorials coming up using that practice finger. I don't like to have to do the extreme sculpted designs on myself because I have to get rid of my, you know, my enhancement and then put my enhance back on. So having this practice finger is going to be so exciting. I hope you guys love this Easter design and I will see you guys all next time. Bye! So I'm going to begin by fitting the form to the nail. And so <laughs> this was probably legitimately the hardest part of this whole design because the form did not want to stick to the silicone practice finger. And I had to play around with it a lot. Plus these forms that I was trying to use up would not rip open at the back. So I had to find a scissors too. So we're going to fit our form to the nail. And like I said, guys, this is my first experience using a silicone practice finger. And so I got I got better at it and you guys will see that in future videos but then we're going to sculpt the length of our nail using a clear sculpture gel and i did want to do this one all in gel as this one's class was dedicated around gel basics and i used a couple different kinds of gel in this video and you guys get to see them all um but if you want to know some more gel basics i will direct you towards that live class and i can put a link to it in the description box below and i do want to mention that if you would like to sign up for future live classes and i know i just said this month's live class i meant last month it was february worry um but if you do want to sign up for future live classes as i do intend on hosting them monthly then just send me an email and i can put you know all the stuff in the description box below for that too so that you can get on the mailing list for all of that live class information but back to this nail using a little bit of the sculpture gel dipped into a purple then an iridescent blue and then a green glitter i'm going to fill in this nail with that glitter ombre and then after that i'm going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear builder gel just to make sure that it is really smooth and it gives this wonderful glassy effect over the glitter and then after we have all of that done, you can flip the nail over for a second to help give it that apex, but then we're going to remove that pesky form and then cleanse this with some gel cleanser or isopropyl alcohol. And then after that is cleansed, I'm going to file it with my nail file. The great thing I think with working with that builder gel that I was using is it requires almost no filing because it just applies so well. And if you guys want to know that was on Vogue's it was on Vogue's Smooth because they have different names for all their products, but it was called Smooth. So now in a nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting my little chick with white Acrogel. And so I don't typically sculpt with Acrogel. Typically, if I was going to be sculpting little 3D bits like this, I would use 4D gel. Um, but every once in a while, I get asked, you know, can you sculpt with, with Acrogel? And the answer is, well, yes, yes, you can. I wouldn't, you know, tell anybody to do that, but... Again, like I said, I just kind of wanted to experiment with some gel with this design. So I'm using Acrogel, probably against my better judgment. So I've got my little chick shape and then I'm going to add, after that's been cured, I'm going to add a little bit more roundness to my chick's head with another bit of that Acrogel, kind of blending it down and giving it a dome shape, curing it again. And then I'm going to do the same for my chick's belly. So I'm going to place down another bit of that Acrogel and then sort of press it out and this particular aqua gel i'm using is very soft compared to others so it you know sculpts a little bit i'd actually say more more difficultly because it kind of sticks and it moves when you don't want it to move so there are some others that would maybe be better than what i chose but then we're going to add a little bit more aqua gel and we're going to be sculpting our chick's beak so there's the beak and then after we have that done then you can go ahead and cure it once again and then set this chick off to the side just for a moment. So now cut off a piece of a straw and then if it has little stripes on it, fantastic. Cut it in half lengthwise and you can use those little stripes as a guide. And then you're going to fill it with clear Acrogel. And throughout this whole process, I really discovered a legitimate hatred for Acrogel. I've never been a huge fan of it, but this whole process made me like it even less. Actually, that's a lie. When I first tried Jellish's Polygel, when it first came out, I was completely awestruck by it and I thought it was the coolest stuff ever but the more I use it the more I don't like it but we're going to fill in our straw with it and you can see it's getting all over my gloves we're going to fill it in best we can then after it is all cured and set then we're going to pop the straw off of it and then there's some just like little icicles hanging onto it or stalactites whatever you want to call them we're going to file them off with a hand file don't file around the outside of the straw or you know where it was touching the straw that dome shape you want to keep that nice round shape but just the top of it where it was a rough edge and then any little bits that are extra 
using more of that clear acro gel, we're going to attach our chick to the end of our stick. And now I'm going to paint a base layer of yellow gel paint all over my chick. And then before it's cured, we're going to add some highlights to it. So don't cure it just yet. So just apply that first layer of the white, or geez, the yellow all over him, over the white, and then grab some white and just kind of dab it in. And you can blend it out and give him a very soft feathery type look. Use some white in very selective areas to give him some highlights so make sure that you kind of you know help shape him in that step and then using a pastel orange we're going to be painting over his beak and then adding just a couple little bits of shading on his body and his wings too and then just kind of defining between his head and his body little bits of orange shading and then with some black gel paint we're going to give him some nostrils on his beak and some eyes and maybe some eyelashes if you really want to go crazy and once you're all done, apply some matte gel top coat over a little chicky, and then once again, set him to the side. So now over a smoothie straw, we're going to be sculpting the egg for our chick and try to make it fairly large, keeping in mind it has to be bigger than your chick if you want it to, you know, fully close. Mine ended up not fully closing and, you know, I liked it. It was, it was good. It still moved. I liked the moving element of it. So we're just going to sculpt our large, large egg. And then after you kind of have it to the shape that you want, you're going to take a knife a craft knife that is dipped into some clear acrylic powder so even though none of this design is done with acrylic it still you still need to have that clear acrylic powder so that your knife won't stick but we want to make sure that your your egg is fairly well shaped before that part so just kind of keep tucking in the sides of it but then using that knife we're just going to divide and cut the little zigzaggy broken egg shape and because this is such a kind of sticky acro gel that I'm using you can see it starts to blend back together typically acro gel will not self level and won't you know re morph into each other again mine's a little funny uh, but we're going to just kind of work with it and then after you have that we're going to cleanse it and then separate the halves if yours did not run back together this should be an easy just snap them apart for me, I decided to use the scissors to kind of help the process along, and then they were still kind of stuck, so I went back to my craft knife and very carefully punctured my separation. Like I said, very, very carefully, because you don't want to stab your finger. That wouldn't be good for anybody. So then after that, we're going to adhere the top half of our little egg to the tip of the nail with more of that acro gel. Then I'm going to attach just the very tip of my chick's head to the underside of that top half of the egg. So you're going to apply more acro gel and then set the chick there and then flash cure this. It's very hard to transfer it to the lamp, to your big lamp without giving it a little bit of a flash cure because it's going to wiggle all around. And now I'm going to sculpt the outside of my little slider mechanism on uh, the outside of a straw. So it's the same size straw as what we sculpted on the inside with. So now we're going to just sculpt kind of a little bit better than a half circle around the outside of the straw with the more of the clear acro gel. Try to make it as thin as possible so it's not super bulky. And keep in mind that this is kind of important to have it really long because it's going to help give some stability to the tip of the nail. So then after that's uh, cured you can cleanse it you can pop the straw out of the middle kind of helps to push in the straw so that it releases and gets a little bit of an air a little bit of air between the two pieces and then you're going to slide that up the little pole that's on the bottom of your chick <laughs> and then attach the bottom of the egg to the tip of that slider now on a smoothie straw so this is a second size of straw a bigger one we're going to be sculpting all of the rest of our little eggs so the first one i'm going to do is going to be the largest so i'm going to sculpt that first one and then cure it you're going to want to cure between each of these eggs so that you don't mess up one after you do the next then here's the second one it's going to be a different angle i didn't want these eggs to just go down the line in a very straight symmetrical just do 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 i wanted them to kind of tip back and forth to add some whimsy to this here's the third one getting them smaller and smaller and smaller as you go and then we're going to do one more at the tip of the nail with very little acro gel and just make a small egg. And like I said, I did tip them back and forth alternating, but that one on the very tip, I decided to do straight. So now after you have all that, you're going to cleanse your eggs and then we're going to attach them to the slider. 
So you want to attach them so they kind of go right up to where the bottom of the chick's egg is. And then we're going to apply some chunky glitter colors to each egg. So this is the same system as I used to get the chunky glitter on my nail where I dipped them or I dipped my brush first into some sculpture gel and then I dipped it into my glitter. I'm using those same three glitters that I used for the nail, but I'm also, since I've got more eggs here, I'm going to be using more colors. So the first one I use is like, just like a Easter explosion. It's got some pinks, some blues, some purple, some green, uh, and a little bit of like a minty, I was gonna say minty orange, that didn't make any sense. Creamy orange is what I wanted to say, but it's got all those different Eastery colors. And then the next one is going to be my purple. The one after that is going to be the blue. And don't worry if the surface of these eggs is a little bit uneven or a rough texture due to the glitter, that part doesn't matter because we're going to encapsulate each one. And then after you have the blue, then the last one you're gonna wanna do is that green again. And then I also used an orange, like a dreamsicle kind of orange on the egg at the top, but I'm holding on to that egg currently. It's like my handle, so I'm going to wait to do that one. But then I'm going to use some more of that clear builder gel and I'm going to cap each egg. So after you apply the clear builder gel, flip the egg over just for like 10 seconds and then cure it. So immediately go from flipped to cured. In fact, one thing that I like to do sometimes is I, especially if I'm sculpting on say my hands and I wanna get a really dramatic apex, is I'll put my hand in upside down and then I'll flip it once it's inside the lamp so that there's no time for it to self-level back down. And you can do that same thing for these eggs. So encapsulate them all the way down. And then like I said, dreamsicle orange over the bigger half of the egg. You're gonna to wanna to do this both on both sides of it, of the split. And don't worry if like mine, there's like this little white, you know, rim around your egg where the glitter didn't go all the way out too. That's just fine, especially since we're going to be adding some white details to the eggs. You'll never notice. And it actually is almost like a slight outline between each egg and gives it just a little bit of definition between them. I absolutely love the way those eggs turned out. I think they're my favorite element of this design, you know, over the little animals or anything, but just those glittery eggs are so cute. So we're going to encapsulate that one too work that gel over it, and then cleanse the whole thing. You gotta cleanse all those eggs, remove that inhibition layer. There's a lot of cleansing involved when you're working with gel. And then after you have all of those cleansed, if there's any little glitter bits that are sticking out on the sides, file them to get rid of them. I know I had just a few. It doesn't take much effort to file those off and it'll just smooth out the whole thing. Don't worry about filing over the egg like all the way up and over the top. That would be a little bit of overkill. But now using some white gel paint, we're going to be adding our little designs and our patterns to our eggs. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of parallel the pattern of the break in that first egg and do a chevron pattern going down. And for all of these eggs, I'm just using white gel paint to add their detail. And then on the second one, I'm gonna add just a thick little kind of swoosh line. I'm using two brushes, a thinner one and a slightly thicker one to add different thicknesses of lines. And there's so many different classic Easter egg type prints, you know, polka dots, stripes, little X shapes, circles, you know, whatever you want, you can pretty much do with your Easter egg. So for the third one, I'm going to just do some horizontal stripes. For the next one, I'm going to do some white polka dots over the top of the whole egg and not making sure they're perfect, kind of sloppy polka dots, if you will. And then on the last egg, I'm going to do stripes again, this time thinner stripes instead of thick ones. And then because I want to make sure my first egg that my little chick is in looks like it was indeed broken in half, I'm going to continue my chevron pattern all the way up on top of that one too. Going all over that little adorable egg. Then we can slide these two bits together and you can apply matte top coat over every other egg. So I'm going to apply matte top coat over the orange one over the purple one and over the green one at the tip. So the reason you wanna do every other egg is that's another thing that's going to help differentiate them between each one. So we got the matte top coat all done. Then we're going to apply glossy gel top coat to our nail. Oh, look at how gorgeous that glitter is. Absolutely love it. And then over the two eggs that do not have top coat. So that's the multicolor one and the blue one. And then after you have that, cure this again. And now we're going to make our little bunny. So the bunny hanging onto the eggs was actually the first idea I had for this. And it's so funny because it's the last thing I did and it almost feels like an afterthought, but it was actually a big part of the idea I had for this nail. So we're going to use more aqua gel, white aqua gel, and we're going to be sculpting our little bunny. So I started out with a circle and then cured it. And then I'm going to sculpt the ears, two ears coming up on my bunny not the easiest process. I decided to move my ears closer together so they weren't so far spread. 
just kind of pull them and then after you have that bunny done you're going to cure it and then glue it to the second egg down kind of off to the side and then I'm going to use more white acro gel and I'm going to sculpt two little paws that are right by his face like he that would be his front paws where he's hanging on on the one side of the egg so press those out they don't have to be anything crazy two little ovals is what we're going for flash cure them just so that they don't you know get bumped or move or anything and then I'm going to be adding his two uh back paws hind paws on the other side of the egg like he's using those to hold on so you're going to see the underside of them when we get all done with this so press those out into a much longer shape than the first two that you did his front paws and then after those are flash geared and you're happy with the shape of those feet so just take your flash cure flashlight and cure them or you can stick this into your lamp either way we're going to do just his little cottontail right for the last piece of it press that in and then we can add some detail so I'm going to add some pink inside our bunny's ears and then on the bottoms of his feet so his little paw pads if you will so with just the little pink gel paint a straight line and then three polka dots for the bottom of the paws and then with black we're going to need to add our bunny's facial features so I've got my two eyes some eyebrows and I'm going to give him and then a little nose and his little smile too just like so and if you decide that you messed up any of these lines you can go back through with white and fix them i'm also going to take my white gel paint and i'm going to add little reflections in his eyes and then because my white gel paint just seems slightly brighter than the white acro gel i used i'm going to use it to add some highlights on his paws and then apply some matte gel top coat over Mr. Bunny. And this whole nail is done. This one is just so extreme and it just oozes Easter vibes. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And if you guys are any, you know, curious about that practice finger, want to know experience, I can answer any questions about using it in the description box below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.